Hi, welcome to another tutorial in factorizing quadratic expressions. Now the quadratic expressions we're looking at in this tutorial are trinomials. They've got three terms in. And also what I've done now is that I'm looking at trinomials where we've got plus terms and also the term in x squared is not just x squared, it's got a number in front of it, in this case a 2 in this example, and in this case a 3. And this makes the factorizing just a little harder than the ones that just were simply x squareds at the front. So how do we do these? Well, what you need to do is just kind of have a working area where you can do trial and error when you're trying to factorize these expressions. So we'll work down here, okay? Now suppose we're trying to get this expression. We should know by now that it comes from expanding two brackets. Two brackets something like this. So we'll just have our brackets. Now in the past when it was x squared we had an x and an x. Remember that that would multiply out to give us the x squared term. Only this time, in this example, we want 2x squared. So the only way that we're going to get that is by putting a 2, say, in front of either this x or this x. I'm going to choose this one. It doesn't matter which one you pick, but I'm just going to do it like that. So 2x times x now becomes the 2x squared. In this example, for 3x squared, what I'm going to do is have 3x and x. You'll see later on when we come to do it. But there you go, 2x times x, 2x squared for this one here. Now, remember also that the numbers that we put in the back here, okay, were two numbers that multiplied together and always gave you the n number here. So what would it be that two numbers that multiply together to give plus 3? Well I can think that it would be a 1 and a 3 or a 3 and a 1. Well let's try a 1 and a 3, a plus 1 and a plus 3. Remember that what we did was these two numbers would multiply together and they would give out the number on the end. So 1 times 3 would give plus 3. Let's just put it on the end there. We'll keep it in green so you can see where these values are coming from. So the red 2x times x, 2x squared, 1 times 3, 3. Okay? Now remember that when you expand out brackets it was 2x times each of the terms in the brackets here and 1 times each of the terms in this bracket. So we've still got to do 2x times the 3. So 2x times the 3, what does that give? Well, that gives plus 6x. And also the 1 times the x gives plus 1x or just simply x. So what do we get with this expansion here? Well, we get 2x squared plus 6x plus x plus 3. Now the two blue terms, the x terms here, come together and give 7x, 6x and x, 7x, not the 5x that we wanted. So oops, this is not going to be the correct expansion to give this. So what do we do? Well, because these numbers are different, we said what two numbers multiply together to give the 3, we said 1 and 3, but so do 3 and 1. So what happens if we turn these around? Well, let's just see. If I put a 3 here and a 1 here, I still get 2x times x, the red 2x squared. I still get 3 times 1, the green 3. But notice how these blue values, the x terms, they're different now. We get 2x times 1, which is now 2x. So let's just change that. We get 3 times x, which is 3x. And what do we got this time? 
2x and 3x make us the 5x. So you can see that it takes a little bit more practice, but we need to juggle around the terms in the bracket. OK, well let's just write this answer back in. OK, and what we ought to do, or what I would suggest you do, is we we'll just write down the question 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. And all too often I see people just simply write the two brackets down below, 2x plus 3 and x plus 1, without any connection at all between them. And I would certainly discourage this. Try and link your statements. Try and avoid writing equals, by the way, OK? Try and avoid writing 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. We're not dealing with an equation here. This is an identical expression to this one. So use the identity sign, OK? The identical sign. And try and set it out horizontally like this, rather than directly underneath. OK. Right. Well, that's said and done. Let's go on to this next one. 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. Let's see what we've got. 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. So if we had that question, What's it going to be identical to? Well, it would have come from multiplying out two brackets. OK. And as I said earlier, the two values that we've got to put at the front here have got to multiply together to give you the 3x squared. Now, again, I would encourage you to either write this in pencil so you can keep rubbing it out or grab a spare piece of paper so that you can try out your ideas. So, let's just try it down here. Our two brackets, we've got a 3x and an x, so we know that they will multiply out to give 3x squared. So we've got that covered. Two numbers now that multiply together to give the plus 6. So, what can that be? Well, there's loads of things out there, isn't there? There's going to be a 6 times a 1, for instance. Let's try that, OK? A 6 times a 1, plus 6. Oops, I better just write that in black. OK, so plus 6 times plus 1. We know that when we multiply these two numbers together, we'll just do that in green, we're going to get the 6 on the end. So we'll put the plus 6 down there. So that's covered. But what about the x terms, which we get from doing 3x times the 1 and 6 times the x? What's that going to give us? It's going to give us 3x times 1, 3x, and 6 times the x, plus 6x. What have we got? We got 9x, not the plus 11x that we wanted. We know from the previous one that if we change these numbers around, the 6 and the 1, we're going to get different values in the middle here. We'll still retain the plus 6, so we'll just swap that around. OK, we'll rub that one out, and we'll rub that one out, swap them around, so we've got a 1 here this time, and a 6 here. So we've still got 1 times 6 is that 6. But what about the blue values, the x terms? Let's see what we get this time. 3x times 6 is now 18x. So we've got 18x there. And 1 times x is just 1x or x. This time though, we've got 19x, not the 11x. So it's neither 6 and 1 or 1 and 6 that we needed. So maybe it's another pair of numbers that multiply together to give plus 6. What could that be? Well, it could be 3 and 2, or 2 and 3. Let's try 2 and 3. Let's put, a, put those in, a 2 and a 3. Again, we've still got our 3x squared. We've still got our 6 on the end. But again, what about the blue terms, the x terms? Let's see what we get this time. 3x times 3. 9x, so put 9x in there, and 2 times x, 2x. Ah, 9x and 2x, 
11x. Bingo. We got the right combination. And if I put a 3 and a 2, it wouldn't have worked. Okay? A 3 and a 2 would have given us the 6 on the end. But with a 3 here, we would have had 3x here. And with a 2 there, we'd have had a 6x. And that would have come to 9x, not the 11x. So I hit lucky here. Okay? And so that's what you've got to try. You've got to be patient with these things. You've got to try them out. And if they don't work and you've got different numbers here, try swapping them around. Sooner or later, you will hit that middle term. And with practice, you'll get faster and faster. Okay, so let's just fill this in. We've got a 3x here then, plus 2, and an x plus 3. And so, I hope this tutorial has given you some idea then on how to factorise these particular trinomials, where we've got a number in the front. Now, it does get a little harder still when we start to switch the signs here. I've given you the basic ones where we've got a plus and a plus as each of these two terms. But in my other tutorials, I'm going to show you what happens, how we tackle it when these signs change to minuses and plus minuses and minus pluses. Okay, so I would encourage you to look at those. But that brings us now anyway to the end of this tutorial.